Greetings, fellow American citizens and patriots of the resistance. My name is Sergeant Dyer of the United States Marine Corps. Most of you, however, know me as Charles, or July 4 Patriot of the American Resistance Movement. Today I'm here to speak to you about the state of our great union, what the founders' intentions for this country were, and the lack of motivation that I see in our countrymen to retain the freedoms fought for so hard by their forefathers. I'd like to bring some of their thoughts to life. Now you may have to do a little bit of research on the subjects I bring before you if you have never studied how the U.S. came to be, but it is your duty to enlighten yourselves. I'm just one of many tasked with the duty of guiding you along the way. However, your thoughts and your convictions must be your own and no one else's. Thomas Jefferson wrote that if a nation expects to be ignorant and free in a state of civilization, it expects what never was and never will be. Patriots, at this crucial point in our history, information and knowledge are key. They mean the difference between retaining and losing this republic. This country was founded out of the desire to have maximum personal freedom and minimum government intrusion, as frequently illustrated in the writings of our founders. They thought of this country as a great experiment where true freedom could at last be attained. They believed in the potential of this country so greatly that they gave their lives. Some of them even watched as their children die on the battlefield and others lost everything they had and died penniless. They endured greater pains than you or I will ever even fathom simply for the dream that one day their children and grandchildren could prosper without the wolf of tyranny knocking at their door. My countrymen, my brothers, that wolf is now at our door. That evil which they warned us of has come upon us like a thief in the night. It has crept slowly into our lives and is preparing for its final blow. We have not heeded the words of our forefathers and for that we may have to pay dearly to regain our republic. I am sorry, but there is a great chance that our republic can no longer be saved through political means. They have all but extinguished our hopes of diplomatic resolve. We cry out as they spend our children's future into oblivion, and yet they refuse to listen to us. We protest as they vote on laws to force us to conform to their health care, and they refuse to listen. We show them in plain daylight that they are overstepping their clearly mandated bounds as set forth by the Constitution, and yet they still refuse to listen. I am deeply saddened by the course of events that have taken place over the last decade, and even more saddened that I was asleep as it happened. Now that I see what our government is doing, it's increasingly difficult for me to understand how the American people can sit idly by as our beliefs and traditions are being dismantled before our eyes. We were once a country of rebellious freethinkers and fiery-spirited innovators. Have we now become a country of cowardice and conformity? The government passed an $800 billion stimulus bill, which robs from the pockets of every man, woman, and unborn child. Without ever even reading this bill, and you stand by doing nothing. They bail out businesses and banks that have failed due to their own mismanagement, greed, and government meddling, and your hard-earned money is what they use, and you sit there silently. Your government dishes out $300 billion to illegal aliens for welfare, all the while refusing to patrol our borders, and you half-heartedly complain about it. They take our Constitution, which our founders fought, bled, and died for, and they shred it as if it means nothing. For the first time in history, we have a president that's sitting on the head of the UN Security Council. For the first time in history, we will have a government-mandated health care. I mean, forget the fact that Medicare, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Social Security, and every other government program ends up bankrupt just like government health care will. It is simply unconstitutional. And if you refuse to participate, you face jail time or getting fined. Where in the Constitution does it give the government the right to mandate your health care? That is left up to the states and the people as for the Tenth Amendment. And yet all you do is hold picket signs in front of Congress and walk away with your tail between your legs when they shove it down your throat. Is this what America's become? James Madison, the father of the Constitution, said the ultimate authority resides in the people and that if the federal government ever got too powerful and overstepped its authority, then the people would develop plans of resistance and resort to arms. 234 years ago, they knew this could happen, and they spoke openly about it so that it wouldn't. But now the mainstream media portrays you as some crazy redneck racist as you echo the thoughts of the very men that created this great nation. 
Only when the corrupt officials feel your grasp at their throats will listen to your pleas. We are the last bastion of hope for freedom in the world. If we fail, the world fails. Do you not understand the implications of allowing our government to turn this country into a nanny welfare state? The founders warned us against the welfare state. Well, the government takes care of everyone from the time they're born until the day they die. They warned against confiscatory taxation and spending what we don't have. Jefferson even believed it was immoral for one generation to pass on debts to the next. As I've said before, this is not some game that you get a second chance at if you fail. If you fail to stand up and fight for freedom, then it will be lost forever. Liberty taken by force can be retaken by force, but if it is given away willingly, it can never be regained. The federal government has already taken too much, and there's no sign of it stopping. They have no grounds to legally take away our rights and violate the Constitution as they do. Our Constitution was based on Cicero's natural law that states that our rights are given to us by a divine power, and no one can take those rights away. And whether you believe in a maker or not, it doesn't matter as an undeniable fact that our country was founded on this by both Christians and pagans alike. They have crossed the line time and time again with regards to our civil liberties and the rights bestowed upon us by the Creator. And it is your right to draw the final line. Thomas Paine said the rights of men in society are neither divisible nor transferable nor annihilable, but are descendable only. And it is not in the power of any generation to intercept finally and cut off the descent. If the present generation or any other are disposed to being slaves, it does not lessen the right of the seceding generation to be free. Wrongs cannot have legal descent. It is our right as free men to cast off the chains which this country places upon us, and when all legal means have been exhausted, we have the right to use force. The very essence of being an American is deeply rooted in rebellion. Now if the words that I speak sound treasonous to you, then perhaps you need to take a step back and take another look at this country and the ideas that served as its foundation. Perhaps you need to study your history a little more and stop listening to mainstream media. Chief Justice William Douglas, the longest serving Supreme Court Justice in this nation's history, stated that the right to revolt has sources deep in our history. You are not wrong to feel the way you do. You're not a bad person to feel anger toward the corrupt officials that enslave you through illegal taxation and unconstitutional legislation. To be prepared to take up arms to defend yourself is to love your country and freedom more than simply being alive. Then have you believed that we're just a group of backwood rednecks without the ability to voice themselves. They resort to violence instead. The simple reality of the matter is that we are men from all aspects of life. We're doctors. We're lawyers, we're farmers, we're marines. We're all around you and you don't know it because we are you. We are the American people. We are the American embodiment of freedom. We love, we laugh, we care for one another and value freedom of all men, regardless of race, above our own well-being. And we realize that taking up arms against tyranny, as Thomas Jefferson put it, is obedience to God. Whether you believe in our God or not does not change the fact that our founders had an idea that this would happen and gave us the ability to stop it through the Constitution. Now, I repeat the quotes of our forefathers because it is imperative that the American people see that they were attempting to protect us from exactly what we face today. All of these quotes have the ring of truth more today than ever. And those of us who are prepared to take up arms in the defense of our brothers and our liberties are completely within our rights as Americans to do so as free men to do so. When the government finally stops listening to us, and it's become quite apparent that they are, then they are declaring war on our very freedoms, and we are left with only two choices, either fighting on our feet or living on our knees. I ask you today to cast off the stigma placed on you by the media, to cast off the chains placed on you by the corrupt officials. We must draw a line in the sand and stop moving it back or we'll find ourselves back into a corner with no way to fight out. If you wait until gun confiscation before you act, you're going to find yourself waking up one morning with a rifle in your hand at no liberty. We must say this far and no farther. We will not allow our sovereignty and freedoms to be taken from us, no matter the perils that we face. That we are Americans and we will fight. Stand with us and join the resistance. 
Stand with us and fight for the freedom of your posterity. Let them not look back at us and see a generation of cowards, but a generation of free men.